Hey guys, what's up? It's Chunky C. Today we're going to talk about the FR Sky X20S Tandem Access System, the tandem receiver setup, the pros and cons of that setup, and is it really redundant? And I'm also going to tell you a little story about why I particularly like this system. So stay tuned. So before we get started, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about this system. I had a 10cc Ultra stick, the Hangar 9 10cc Ultra, uh, that I built and I put this system in it. I put a R10 Pro and I put a 900 megahertz, I believe it was the 9MX inside of it, and I ran the setup that I'm going to show you today. Uh, for whatever reason, on takeoff, on the maiden flight, Hadn't even got a complete flight in when I took off. I climbed out. When I made my first turn, I got a critical RSSI warning from my radio. And as soon as I got that, I lost 2.4 gigahertz signal totally and all the telemetry. Um, if it hadn't been for that 900 megahertz system backup that I have that I'm going to show you today, uh, I would have lost that plane. But instead of losing it, I was able to safely fly it back around and bring it in for a safe landing, almost like nothing ever happened. Whenever I lost the signal, I never noticed any glitching. Uh, there was no lag. There was no hesitation or anything. It was just a, a super smooth transition. So that's why I wanted to do this video and uh, show you guys how to set this up. Because whenever I first got this system, um, the information out there was kind of was kind of thin there wasn't a whole lot of out there on how to set up these receivers and and how to set up this tandem system so i'm going to go over it today a little bit in detail with this r9 sx there's something you have to do with this the channel six port on this i'm going to show you how to program it in the radio um all right guys i'm back uh first thing i want to show you is uh we're going to go into the setup and uh, i'm going to show you just a quick bind procedure of how to bind these uh, receivers to the X20 or the X20S, really the ethos system. Um, I'm not gonna go into showing you how to register. Um, if you're here, you probably already know, know how to do that. Um, there's a guy on YouTube, Darren, his channel is Mr. D Following With Style. He does a ton of ethos videos to teach you how to do things, everything from uh, uh, registering and binding your receivers to setting up the redundant system to updating firmware. I'll, uh, I'll put a link in here somewhere to his channel so that you can go check him out. Uh, he's a great guy, responds well to the comments if you have any questions. So I would definitely, if you have a X20 or an X20S, I would definitely sub him and watch some of his videos. You can learn a lot. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to go in. Uh, go into your internal module and make sure that the state is on. Okay. So you notice down here you have 2.4 and 900 megs. So turn both of those on. Those are your internal modules. That's also how we're going to test to make sure that the system is working. So you can see I've got 200 or 2.4 and 900 megahertz. Both of the modules are on. Scroll down a little bit more. Uh, let me grab my pointer here. You'll see you have register, bind, set, reset, and everything. You can register and bind uh, three receivers in the ethos system. They can either be, all three of them could be uh, 2.4 gigahertz, or you could have a mixture of one 2.4 and one 900, which is what I'm going to show you today. Um, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to bind the R8 Pro, I've got it already set up. So you just hit the bind on the RX1, Fine. turn on the receiver and you'll notice that it'll, it'll recognize it. Select device says R8, so I'm gonna select that. It says bind okay. So we're done with that. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn off this receiver and I'm gonna hook the power up to 
telemetry lost. I'm going to hook it up to the R9 and do the exact same thing, but I'm going to do it on receiver two. So oh. waiting for receiver, we're going to turn it on. It says R9SX, bind OK. Okay, so that's how you bind the receivers. I mean, it's, it's super easy. You probably already knew that, but um, I just wanted to cover it and make sure that we were all on the same page. Now, on your receiver two for your R9SX, if you'll look on, let's see if I can get this over here, on the R9SX, see if I can get this in here, uh, the channel six port right here says channel six or S bus out. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually assign that port as S bus. And I'm going to show you how you do it. So you go into set right here under receiver two R nine S X. You hit options and you scroll down here to your pin six. Okay. You see, I've already got it set to S bus so that you could hit that. You can, you can pretty much assign it to anything you want. You can make it channel 14, 13, 10, any of the others that you want. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the list, you hit S bus and it assigns that port as an S bus. So that's very important. You've got to do that for this system to work. So we're just going to back out of here. And I'm going to take a short pause for the calls so that I can uh, move the radio out of the way, make some adjustments, hook all this up, and we're going to demonstrate it here in just a second. So stand by. All right, guys, I am back again. So I've got my radio on. What I want to do is I want to turn uh, the switch on. Uh, I've got my battery uh, kind of off frame here, but I've got my switch the power switch is actually running into one of the S bus, S bus ports. Um, you can see the S bus in port right here, S bus in. And I've got a mail to mail lead coming off the channel six port, which is now the S bus out port. And I've just got two receivers plugged into the one and two spot so that we can look at it and, you know, I can show you that everything works. So I've got my radio on. Let me turn these on here. You should see two green lights. You can hear my radio. It tells you, hey, everything's good. Okay, so you see we got green lights here. Uh, servos work. Everything's working as advertised. So what I want to do is I want to go in to the same RF system menu that we were in a little while ago that we turned uh, the state and we turned on 2.4 and 900 megahertz. So what I want to do, I'm going to start with 2.4 and I'm going to turn that off. And you might hear a, a note that says she might talk to us. Yeah, well, maybe not. But anyway, so uh, 2.4 is now off and everything works. You can kind of see, if I can get up here, you can see 2.4 uh, gigahertz is off. All right. So I'm going to cut that back on. We'll turn off 900. I'll show you that. You see 900 is now off. Everything still works. And you can also see the red light on the 900. So the 900, this receiver has lost signal. So I'm going to cut that back on. It'll go green. All right. Now we're green. I'm going to do the same for this 2.4 and you'll see it go red. All right, so now we have a red light. So we're still work. See the green light come back on. Red light come on the 900. We still work. Now, eh, if you cut both of them off, nothing's going to work, obviously. So we're going to turn both of those back on. We got green lights. Now, this is a really good system. Like I told you at the beginning of the video, this actually saved my plane. So I think it works very well. The transition was very smooth. Now, if you were to pair this with a redundant battery system, like the simple system that I showed you in a previous video that I did, this would be a very good system. 
Um, is it redundant? I don't think it is simply because you have one fail point and that's this R8 Pro or whatever receiver that you use. If this receiver dies, then you lose power to this and you lose power to everything else. So it's not a truly redundant system, but it is a great backup system. I dare to say fail safe is not really a fail safe, but it's a good backup system. And um, FR Sky, some of their older systems, like the, it was the D16 and the D8, whenever you ran dual receivers, you had to turn the telemetry off on one of the receivers for whatever reason. FR Sky said you couldn't run dual telemetry. Um, I have been running dual telemetry on this setup uh, with the Ethos. Uh, when you're running 2.4 and 900, you can get two different telemetry signals with no problem. I've done it. And I've been doing it for a while and it works fine. I think you could probably even do it with dual 2.4. Not really sure why you would need it unless you just wanted an RSSI value of each receiver. But you can run dual telemetry on the Ethos system with two receivers. All right, so that's it, guys. That's the setup. Just a quick little uh, overview of how it works, how to set it up. Like I said, when I started trying to figure this system out there's just not a lot of information out there on how to do this uh, some of the pros of the system uh, it's a great backup system it's proven to save planes it's my save it's saved my plane um, another thing it could be paired with the dual batteries for even more security uh, the ethos system is actually pretty easy to learn um, if you're coming from Spectrum or something, there's going to be a learning curve. I'm not going to say you'd be able to just pick it up and just run with it, but there is going to be a learning curve. But once you learn how to do it, it's really easy. I kind of think of it kind of like um, OpenTX or EdgeTX that's been dumbed way down and just really made simple. Uh, I think FR Sky's done a great job on that, that ethos operating system. Um, it's inexpensive. It's a good alternative to the Jetty Duplex system. The Jetty Duplex system is very similar to this. Um, I don't have a Jetty. I've researched it. I've looked into it, and it operates a lot in the same way. You have a, a 900 megahertz receiver that uh, is linked to the main receiver through, uh, I'm not sure if they call it an S-Bus, but it's basically a data link cord. Um, and it, it operates a lot in the same way. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, some of the Jetty users that I've uh, talked to, you know, when you mention FR Sky X20S or X20 in the tandem system, and they're like, oh, you're one of those guys. Um, yeah, I am. Um, I just, I like the radio. You know, I like the way it felt in my hand. I thought it worked, and it works great. So, um the receivers and the accessories are also easy to get. You can find a couple of different websites online uh, to get the stuff from. Even Amazon uh, carries the radios, the receivers, and a lot of the accessories. Uh, so it's a, it's a really good system. It's a really good setup for the money. And um, the only cons that I could really think of, number one, it's not truly redundant. Uh, simply because you have the one fail point, and that's this receiver here. Uh, the lack of quality instruction manuals is a biggie. Uh, you got to refer to YouTubers or to GitHub forums or other forums online and kind of hope that you run across somebody like Mr. D falling with style. Uh, like I said, Darren's got a lot of time put into his videos. He knows a lot about these systems and he can teach you a lot of stuff. If it hadn't been for him, I probably wouldn't still wouldn't know how to set some of this stuff up. But um, another problem that I found, it's not really a problem. It's, it's, it's just kind of like a little quirk, a little gripe of mine. But 900 megahertz antennas are big and they're big. And when you have two of these and you have a, sm a small airframe on a plane, kind of like a 10 cc ultra stick that's got like a little narrow body on it. It's really hard to find places to put all this stuff. Um, because think of it, if you run two uh, tandem batteries on this, you'll have two batteries, two switches, two receivers, and you got to find places to put all this stuff. That was a problem that I had with that 10 cc. I just 
finding somewhere to put these big antennas was was a challenge to say the least. Um, but that's that's it. That's my take on the FR Sky setup here. Um, if anybody out there is running any of these, if you've got any comments or anything, if you found something out or you've got any good ideas or you've uh, got some good knowledge to spread through your experience, just put it down in the comments. I'd like to hear it. So would others. And uh, that's it. That's all I've got, guys. Uh, just, you know, stay tuned and keep an eye out for more videos. I'm going to be doing some more stuff. We're going to talk about Spectrum. We're going to talk about Fataba. Um, I've got Fataba. Fataba has a couple of different ways that you can run dual receivers with them. They're a very thorough system. We're going to cover some of that also. But um, until then, I'm going to get off of here. So I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. <laughs>